Hey everybody, today we're going to be talking about homeostasis. This is a really important topic in AMP and we're going to be coming back to it again and again. I wanted to make sure you really understood it. Homeostasis is the tendency of the body to maintain a constant internal environment. Um, homeo means same and stasis means stable. Um, now that doesn't mean that the body never changes. Uh, far from it, the body is constantly changing. What it means is that th when there is a change, we are going to try and bring the body back into normal values. So there's a number of different components to a homeostatic loop. The first one is the stimulus. And the stimulus is really just a change in some set point value. And we have a lot of different values that are set and are maintained by homeostasis. So think about your body temperature, right? Most people have a body temperature of somewhere around 37 degrees Celsius. One of the best ways to tell if something's wrong is if your temperature isn't correct. It's too high or too low. Um, another thing that we tend to look at in homeostatic loops would be um, your blood pressure, right? So normal blood pressure for humans is somewhere around 120 over 80 millimeters mercury. Um, your heart rate, your heart rate, uh, we like to see that around 70 beats per minute. Um, pH, somewhere around 7.4. Um, glucose levels, for example, your blood glucose, we don't want it to get too far out of whack, so it's somewhere between I don't know, 70 to 140 milligrams per DL. Now, I don't need you to memorize these numbers. We are going to be talking about all of these throughout the course. But what I want you to recognize is that each one of these has its own special number or range that uh, the body tries to maintain. Whenever we get outside of that range, that's the stimulus. So, for example, it's about 5 degrees outside. Fahrenheit in Michigan in January here, if I went outside uh, and stood out there for a little bit, my body temperature would probably start to go down. Um, the stimulus is the change in the body temperature. It's not me going outside. If I went to the fair and I had a whole bunch of cotton candy, my blood glucose level would probably go way up. All right, me going to the fair isn't the stimulus. The stimulus is the change in the set point value. Now, for the stimulus to have any effect, we have to have something called a receptor. We're going to talk a lot about receptors when we get to the nervous system, but for now, all you need to know is that a receptor is going to sense the change in the stimulus, and it's going to report it. Okay, so we have a stimulus that's going to cause a receptor to do something. And the receptor is actually going to report the change to an area of the body called the control center. Now, the control center is oftentimes the brain, but not always. Sometimes it's an endocrine organ. Whatever it is, or whichever part of the body it is, it's the part of the body that can get the information that there's been a, a change, a stimulus, and it's going to direct another part of the body called the effectors to do something about it, okay? So let's talk about temperature for a minute. Say, um, say I was running around and working out and my body temperature started to increase, right? That's a stimulus. Body temperature increasing is a stimulus. The receptors, in this case thermoreceptors, are gonna pick up that increased body temperature and they're going to report it to the part of the body that can do something about it. In this case, for temperature, it's the hypothalamus in the brain. And the hypothalamus are gonna tell effectors to fix this problem. So what happens when you start working out usually? Well, you start sweating. So the effectors are actually sweat glands. Sweat glands are going to produce sweat. They're gonna make the surface of your skin wet. And then the evaporation of that sweat is actually gonna help cool you down. The other effector that um, 
might be engaged when you are starting to get a little bit too hot would be the smooth muscles within your blood vessels and they're going to cause something called vasodilation. So they're actually going to relax and the blood vessels are going to expand. They're going to get bigger. And I don't know if you've ever noticed when you're really hot, maybe the veins on the backs of your hands or on the tops of your feet will pop out and literally be bumpy. You can see mine are not bumping out because it's really cold. Um, but that vasodilation brings a lot of blood to the surface and we can get rid of some of the heat that's inside of our body by allowing the heat to um, be exchanged with the outside air. And so those effectors are hopefully going to bring your temperature back down and essentially they're going to get rid of that stimulus. So once we get back to normal body temperature, the stimulus is gone, the receptors don't have anything to pick up, the control center doesn't have anything to do, and we turn off our effectors. So if you've noticed, this is a big loop that goes through, and we have a couple of components to the loop, stimulus, receptors, control center, effectors. And these parts of it can be different and the stimulus itself can be different so you can have a higher temperature or a lower temperature either one of those is going to result in receptors picking it up the control center telling it what to do and the effectors doing it now let's go back to temperature for a second here so this is the loop we just drew okay 37 degrees is your normal body temperature you start to go up a little bit and that's the stimulus. It's going to be picked up by the receptors. We're going to take it to the part of the brain that takes care of your temperature, and we're going to activate these effectors. This will hopefully bring the temperature back down. Now you can also go too far. So what happens if your temperature starts to fall? I went outside, I'm standing out there without a coat. That would be a different stimulus. The stimulus is still a change in normal, but now it's too low. So we're going to have receptors pick up that change, and it's going to report it to the control center. And the control center has now been told that your body temperature is getting too low. And it's going to tell effectors what to do. Now, what's important here is that the effectors aren't going to be the same. We're not trying to bring your body temperature down. We're trying to bring your body temperature back up. The stimulus was that it was too low. So we're going to have different effectors. So have you ever gotten really cold? What do you do? Well, you shiver. So skeletal muscles are going to be your effectors where you start shivering and that actually generates body heat that's going to raise your body temperature the other thing that we're going to do is the smooth muscles of your blood vessels instead of vasodilating we're going to cause them to constrict so they're going to be this and we're going to cause them to get smaller that's going to reduce the amount of blood that's going to the periphery and it's going to maintain that heat you're not going to lose so much heat off so hopefully the effectors will be able to increase your body temperature back to normal set point. So you can see there's a loop here. If it gets too hot, we're gonna bring it back down to normal. If you get too cold, we're gonna bring it back up to normal. And that uh, tendency to go back to normal, to reduce the change is called negative feedback. So negative feedback simply means, I'll put this in a different color because this is important. Negative feedback simply means that um, we're not going to keep going. So the temperature isn't going to go up and 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 up. We're going to try and bring the temperature back down to normal. Likewise, if your temperature starts to fall, we're going to try and bring it back to normal. So at the end of the loop, Hopefully, there we've reduced any change that's happened. That's why it's negative. Another important com uh, component of this is that almost all of those mechanisms um, 
that maintain homeostasis in the body are going to be negative. So if you think of some value, it's going to change, but then we're going to bring it back to normal. So by the end, it's kind of back to where it was. It can go down and we would bring it back to normal also. So it doesn't matter whether it's going up or down. It's that tendency to bring it back to baseline. Positive feedback is very different. So only a couple of examples of that in the body. So positive feedback is if you have a stimulus and it starts happening, instead of trying to bring it back to normal, we actually increase the stimulus. We do things that increase the stimulus. Really the best example of this is uh, childbirth. Okay, so here you have mom and a baby. Baby's probably upside down at this point in the uterus. Okay, so as the baby grows, it's getting bigger and bigger and heavier and heavier and it's pushing down on the cervix. Okay, at a certain point, once the baby's fully done, um, that amount of pressure on the cervix is going to send is, is going to activate receptors that are going to take that signal, that stimulus, to the brain. The brain's going to produce a hormone that causes uterine contractions. Okay? When the uterus starts to squeeze on the baby, what's it going to do? It's going to push the baby even harder down on the cervix. More stimulus on the cervix. The receptors take that stimulus to the brain. The brain produces more hormone. More hormone, more contractions. More contractions, more pressure. So you can see that we're not saying, ooh, mm, a lot of pressure on the cervix. Better, you know, better do something to the baby to make it stop pushing on the cervix. No. Instead, we're actually causing more stimulus to happen. And obviously, the reason we're doing this is because the baby has to come out. But um, this is considered positive feedback because we're not trying to bring that back to normal. We're trying to increase the stimulus each time. So that would be positive feedback. There's really only a couple of examples of positive feedback. Most examples in the body are going to be negative feedback. And that's why during homeostasis, the body tends to maintain that stable internal environment because anytime it gets off, out of whack, we're going to bring it right back to normal. All right, that's it.